you would have to try that out to see if it fit. But there are less expensive ways to, um, to get a higher height if you're having trouble with uh, standing up after using the toilet. Now, the commode chair had the armrests, and sometimes people just need the armrests on their toilets. That helps for balance as well as for strength for pushing up. So the armrests on the left are less than about $50. The ones on the right are more expensive. That um, Those bars slide down when you need them and then swing up when you don't. And those are a couple hundred dollars. The model on the lower left has the, uh, has the armrest just added. Um, very inexpensive model, less than $30. And then the one on the lower right is the Invisibar, kind of like this. So it's about $139. But it does have the toilet, um, it's got the toilet paper roll right in it. And so it doesn't look like a grab bar, but it's a very stable thing for you to hang on to. You want to be very careful that you're not using things that aren't stable when you're trying to get up after you're using the toilet. Be, and so you want something very stable to use. Now, we've talked about the, the shower, the tub, and the toilet, and now how would we use a sink if we had to use a wheelchair? And so the traditional vanity style is on the left, and if you were in a wheelchair and wanted to get up as close as possible, you may need to take the doors off that vanity and clean out some of the area in, front, in, the, in the front of that vanity to cut out that area so that your legs could fit underneath the vanity so that you could be as close to the sink as possible. So that would be one alternative. Another alternative would be to use a pedestal sink as the one on the right. But the problem with that is that you can't use that to stand up because it's not designed to be sturdy enough to take our full weight. Um, if you have, you know, if you decide that you need something like the pedestal sink, you have to be aware that you can't put things around it. On the vanity on the left, you can keep your toothbrush and your soap and a lot of items, and you don't have that option with the vanity, but you can get right under it with a wheelchair. And so that has, you have to decide what your issues are and what is going to work best for you. But there are ways to cut out the vanity that would allow you to still have some counter space. Um, it wouldn't look, it wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily look quite as nice as the pedestal sink, although our, um, our certified aging in place specialists and our remodelers can make things look very, very nice. We don't have to have things looking bad just because we need them more accessible. Now, we're moving to the kitchens. And so if you look at your worksheet, you'll, you can see some of the areas that you can think about your own kitchen with. Because we're really looking at do we have issues that limit our ability to use all these areas in our kitchen? Your issues may be different than your neighbor's issues, but you need to think about how can you best manage for those things that are important for you. And that's, that's why we ask the question, is it important for you to do cooking? You know, if it is, then we, need to, then we need to look at all those parts of the kitchen that involve cooking. If it's not, then that wouldn't be a place where you would put a lot of your time or energy or money um, to, to renovating. Now, when the microwaves first came out, they all went on the counter. And then we realized that we could save space and have more counter space if we put them up over our cooktops. But the problem is sometimes as people age, they lose some of their upper extremity strength, they have rotator cuff problems, and reaching up into that microwave up here isn't comfortable or safe. And so we may need to move the microwaves back to the counter. Because at the counter level, you, can, you are at about waist height, which is where our easiest lifting is. And so you could lift things out. Even, if, even when I'm steaming vegetables in my microwave, there can, all, there can be lots of, um, there can be hot water in the bottom of my microwave steamer. And that could be very dangerous if I dumped that on myself accidentally. 
And so looking at safer ways that we can really use the microwave. The microwave is oftentimes for people their major way of heating food. And so if that, is, if, that, if that is how you're heating most of your food, you want that to be as comfortable as possible for you to get in and out of. So that would be something to consider if you, if you were having some upper extremity strength issues or if um, you have become a little bit shorter as the years have gone on. Now, the refrigerators. And we all have our favorite kind of refrigerator. And we just want to think about the benefits of the different kinds. If your issue is reaching or bending, you may want the type of refrigerator, you may want a side-by-side -side if you have space for it so that you can store things in both your refrigerator and freezer right about your, from your chin to about, to about your uh, mid-thigh level. That's the easiest place for us to reach things. Some people don't use their freezer much, and so they don't, they don't need to bend much to get into the freezer, but by having the refrigerator on top, they can open that and they can reach everything easily. So you want to think about what your particular issues are and how you, might, how you might choose an appliance if you have the opportunity to upgrade that would make it easier for you, easier and safer. A gallon of milk weighs eight pounds. So where you put that gallon of milk depends on how easy it is for you to lift things and where, where you have space in the refrigerator. As the OT, I may say, you know, it may cost a few more cents, but because upper extremity lifting is hard for you, you may want to go to buying half gallons of milk. Because, because that eight pounds can be a lot for the lifting. But you want to think about what will work best for you with particular issues that you may have. Now, as we, as we age, why our feet are oftentimes an area that we have some pain in. I was listening to a radio report this morning, and complaining about foot pain is one of the common problems of people going to the doctor. And one of the ways to decrease your foot pain is to sit down some of the time. And so sitting down while you do some of your food preparation may be very helpful. But sitting down at your counter, as you can see in the picture on the left, can be very awkward because your knees bump into, the, into your cupboards and you're reaching up high. So one of the, one of the very ingenious solutions that, that we've seen is to remove one of your drawers and replace it with a rollout, a pull-out counter, so that you can pull that out when you need it, put a chair there, it's a little bit lower than your counter height would be, and your legs can go right underneath it. So that may be an option for you, especially as the holidays come up, if you're making a lot of, a lot of food or a lot of potato salad for something, you may be much more comfortable with that pull out so that you can sit down. Of course, another way to do it is to take the things over to a table and sit down and do it there. So, but you want to look at how, if my feet hurt, how can I get off them but still do those things that are meaningful to me? If you're cooking on a stove and using the oven, you want to look at how that can be safest for you. One of the, one of the ways that um, seems to be very safe for our older adults is to have the controls in front. Of course, that isn't safe if you have grandchildren who may be playing with those controls. And so that, that would be an issue that you'd want to take into account before you switch to the controls in front. But the controls in front keep you from having to reach over a, um, a hot burner to turn, to turn the oven on or off or to turn the, um, the burners on or off. Sometimes if we have a bathrobe with sleeves, that could easily get caught on the burner and so we're not safe. So we want to look at different ways for that. Now when you're using the oven, it can be very awkward if you have any lower back pain to bend over that oven door as you're pulling it down to get in and pull the, um, pull the oven racks out. And so we do have little pieces of wood that have a hook in them so that you can pull your oven rack out to a more accessible place 
get the, get the dish and put it on your counter. So if you are using the oven and you have any back pain, you may want to look at doing that. Of course, if you have back pain, you may want to look at, and you use an oven, you may want to put a wall oven in so that it's at more of a waist height so that it is easier for you if you are trying to avoid bending. Now, this is a temporary situation that I helped a person create because she had had a knee replacement and she was living alone and she needed to be able to fix her own food. The safety of putting a tub on her walker and have her carry her tea and her um, oatmeal across the floor to where her table was, I wasn't real comfortable with. And so we set up this temporary table with a chair. So it was right next to her counter. So while she was recovering from this knee replacement, she was able to still maintain her independence in, um, in meal preparation. But she was then able to take that table away when her book club came over. And when she was able to carry things, when she was upgraded to a cane and she didn't have to have a walker, she could then carry things to her table, which was a more comfortable place. But this was a temporary solution that didn't cost her any money, but it allowed her to maintain her independence. Somebody didn't have to come in for every meal and carry her food to the uh, table for her. Now, if bending is an issue for you, you may find that it's, it's pretty uncomfortable to get down to the lower rack of your dishwasher. So the drawer dishwashers are a, um, an alternative. And for people who are living by themselves or just with one other person, it may be a more economical way to do the dishes if you're just doing a smaller amount in one drawer. Now, the two drawers on the right, you can see, you still have the bending issue. But if bending is your issue, you may want to, and you need two drawer size, you may want to put the drawers next to each other. But there are ways to, uh, to accommodate someone who has difficulty bending. Now, we talked about the laundry. <sighs> Is laundry something that you have to do yourself? <laughs> we all have to decide that for ourselves. Most most laundry is in the basement for homes that were built um, in the, before the last 10 or 15 years. Some people have moved their laundry up to the main floor, but I find that one of the biggest issues that people need to get downstairs to the basement for is to do their laundry. And so having two rails down the stairs would be necessary for somebody to go down to the basement to do their laundry. But the person may decide somebody else can do my laundry, or I can send it out, or maybe I have space in my home to move the laundry someplace on my main floor if that's important for me to do. Now, the, the machine that is on your, on your left, that is a machine that is very nice for people who have back injuries, back, any back pain, because when it's raised, you don't have to bend down to get in or out of that. But it takes up a lot of space, because that's just the washer, and then the dryer is just as wide. But those are, those are very convenient if you have the space. Oftentimes, if we have to move the washer from the basement up to the main floor, we have to put it in a smaller space. So um, you may find a closet, you may find a pantry, there may be um, an eating area that's not being used that you could put it in, there may be another part of the house that that would work in, but you may find that you want a more compact system. The appliance in the middle still has the front load washer, but you would have to bend down to get into that. So if bending is an issue for you, that may not be the appliance that you would want. The appliance on the right has the top loader washer, and so you can bend a little bit to get into that. You don't have, it's not as high as our 
um, as our traditional washer, so you don't have to bend over quite as much, but you can still get things there. And then the dryer is at about eye level for most people, so it's not too high. You're not reaching up real high for the dryer. But you think about if this is something that is meaningful and important for you to do, how can you do this so that it's safest? And I'm very concerned about the people who are insisting on going down their stairs even though they don't have the two handrails because they have to do their own laundry. And I'm really concerned that the falls could really create a lot more trouble for them than, um, than some of the alternatives. And when we think about the cost, moving your laundry up would be an expense, um, however you did it, but you may decide it's really cheaper to have someone come in and do your laundry or to send it out. So you just want to, you want to think outside of the box for how you might be able to do that. <sighs> Cooking is important, bathing is important, laundry is important to some of us, but I don't want to minimize how important our leisure activities are for us. AARP's research has found that people are happiest when they are engaged in things that are meaningful to them in their communities. And so don't discount the need for you to still do those things that are important to you. And these are individual to each of us. It may be woodworking, it may be working on your computer, it may be crafts, but we have to think about what we like to do and then where those things are located. Are we storing things up in a cupboard that's too high and with our upper extremity limitations, we really can't get there? Do we have things in the basement that could be moved up? You know, do we have a bedroom that we could move some of those, that sewing room that's in the basement up to? So don't minimize the importance of being able to do things that are important to you. We all have, we all need meaning in our lives and we are going to stay more happily engaged in our community if we can do those things that are important to us. Where our electrical outlets and switches are located can make a difference for us. If we are bending down all the time to plug and unplug that vacuum sweeper and that's causing issues for our back, we want to change that, we want to put that in a in a location that could be much more convenient for us. Having it so that I just have to bend down a little